it is now time to weigh in the main event. Please welcome the undefeated challenger from Sundsvall, Sweden, Otto All In the I'm going to count how many times I hear lineal this weekend. Can somebody do a, a count how many times? Look, a little cringy, but okay. I like it. I ain't going to lie. I like it. It's the lighting, maybe. It's the lighting that makes it, it looks nice. You know, WB, WB, WCW is my shit. Psychosis and La Parca. And Juventud Guerrero, you got the juice now. Remember his, remember that gimmick? Too cool, Juventud. Uh oh, it's time. I am sick of seeing Tyson Fury in his draws, though. That shit is getting annoying, man. I understand you do it for charity and all that, but it's like, all right, man. All right. All right. So we're going to talk in detail about the heavyweight division, Tyson Fury. If he wins, he'll be fighting Deontay Wilder February 22nd, 2020. What is the... What's... Will feel the fury! Get the steel cage out, Bob, so this bomb don't run away. See, what you just saw there, Andre, was like professional wrestling level <laughs> theatrics and showmanship. Yeah. The difference being they're actually going to yeah. fight. What are your thoughts about what you just saw? I like the response from Valine. We didn't get that from Tom Short. Valine looked like he was engaged. I felt like, I didn't hear what he said, but I felt like whatever he was saying, he meant it. He was matching but, but he you, was matching the energy. He was trying to. But you see Tyson Fury try to get the one up at the end, grabbing the mic, just to send a message to Valina, this is my show and I'm the boss. He's trying to assert himself. I love what I see what I'm seeing from Tyson Fury. The showmanship, the performance he put on last time against an over another overmatched challenger. Valina is largely seen as an overmatched challenger. And I'll tell you something else. Fury comes in at 254 and a half. That's lighter than he's been in recently. He looks more in shape. He said this this camp has been about boxing, not just losing weight. But here's the scary thing. If he's better tomorrow night than he was last time, which was damn good, I still see some love handles. It's not like he can't be in better shape than this even. Your thoughts? I, I agree. I think Fury can drop down, and I think if successful tomorrow night, we'll see him even lighter against Deontay Wilder, but eight and a half pounds lighter than he was against Tom Schwartz. Like, he's a dangerous, dangerous man. He's showing you that he's taking this guy serious, but he's also taking the rematch serious. I don't have a problem with this guy he's fighting tomorrow night. Well, I have, I don't know if I have a problem with it. And he did a job on Tom Schwartz. Let's wait for his uh, interview to pop up. So 28-0-1, uh, I had him defeating Deontay Wilder despite the two knockdowns, barely in my opinion, but I had him winning. Just my opinion, though. Um, last fight against Tom Schwartz, you know, they said, oh, wait, they got, uh, Otto Wileen. Listen in. Please, prepare you for Please subscribe. Moment. Everything I've done since I was 15 years old, I, I trained very hard, worked very hard, and I've been looking forward to this moment, and it's finally here. Tyson Fury is bigger than you. He's longer than you. He's more experienced than you. Where are the weaknesses for you to exploit? You know, I'm a young, hungry guy, and he's going to know that I'm here to win. I gotta do everything I can to do it. I'm gonna leave everything in the ring. Your father was your first coach. He introduced you to this game. He supported your career. He passed away without any notice earlier this year. What would he have said to you before this fight? He would have told me that you can beat him. You gotta go in there, believe yourself. You gotta move your feet, don't stand, and let him, uh, let him just 
aim at you and get out shots. You got to move your feet and be ready for him. You can beat him. There you have it, Max. Thank you, Mark. That's how the, the undefeated heavyweight champion of the world came out. That's professional level sh showmanship right there. Joins us next, Max on Boxing. Warning, this product. Max was about to say next level shit right there. And yeah, you know, I'm pretty sure that the ESPN big wigs executives are telling them like, yo, lineal champion. He is the lineal champion, especially since PBC and PBC on Fox don't acknowledge WBO belt. They say that all you need is WBC, WBA and IBF to be undisputed. They literally do not acknowledge the WBO belt. But um, he weighed in at 254. Compared to his last fight was against Tom Schwartz, 263. Before that, 256 and a half against um, Deontay Wilder. 258 in his second comeback fight after, um, basically, he's had, this is his sixth fight in 13 months. Just a little over 13 months. Six fights, no, correction, I'm sorry. Six fights in a little over 15 months. After a two and a half year layoff. No, excuse me. Three, what is that? Uh, sorry, let's do a video on that. Did a three year layoff. Damn near three year layoff. Two and a half year layoff. I mean, despite what you think of Tom Schwartz and Adam Waleen, they're still undefeated. You know, I mean, he's only had that one tough fight against Deontay Wilder, Sefi Sefera, Francisco Pianetta. Those were the combat fights. People didn't expect for him to fight um, Deontay Wilder when he did. That was, you know, like a dream come true. And then he signed the ESPN deal with Tom Schwartz out of Wallin. Also, I do think you guys are getting shafted over in, B over in the UK, having to pay for this shit on BT Sports box office. I'm going to be covering UFC. Don't you get UFC free over there, though? And they're going to get boxing after, right? Isn't that how it works? So, Bob Barum and all sides are pretty much confirmed that February 22nd, 2020, the rematch with Deontay Wilder is happening unless um, Otto Waleen disrupts some shit or um, Deontay Wilder, God forbid, loses to, to um, um, a loser tease. That rematch is supposed to happen November the 23rd, from my understanding. No, what is it, 22nd or 23rd? Sometime in November. Um, What else? The 23rd. No, it is the 23rd, right? Saturday? Andy Ruiz versus, uh, Andy, Andy, Andy Ruiz versus Anthony Joshua 2. The rematch is happening in Saudi Arabia. Arabia. Everything's done. Official press tours over. It is done, signed, sealed. They're going into training camp. If not, have started training camp already. This is what we know Joshua has been in training camp December the 7th. The biggest issue I had with Tyson Fury versus Wilder, Wilder versus Tyson Fury 2, is that they even signed for a third fight. And it's looking like it's signed, sealed, no matter if the winner or loser, I mean, the, the loser gets knocked out brutally in round one. June 2020. So, Wilder versus Fury 2 in, um, in um, February of uh, 2020. And then if Fury wins, it'll be Fury versus Wilder 3 in June of 2020 and Andrew Ruiz and in, in, in whoever wins between Andrew Ruiz and Anthony Joshua has two mandatories with Kubred Pulev and Alexander Usyk and then the WBC that mandatory is going to be due if the Dylan White situation is resolved by the time the two Fury fights are up because Dominic Brazil was the last mandatory I know it's a whole lot of political mumbo jumbo but hey listen that's the world we live in right now let's fast forward I forgot I could fast forward this shit. Here he is. Let's listen in. Please subscribe. We're going to be here covering these fights tomorrow night. Before I end the video, I'm going to tell you what fights exactly it is I'm going to be covering on the card. Turn this the world, Tyson Fury. Tyson, thank you as always for joining. What was the Lucador mask about? Before I'll get into the Creed stuff in a second. You just went to the weigh-in in a Lucador mask. Why? I want to bring entertainment. Luchador. I want it to be an entertaining weekend, entertaining fight. Give the fans something to cheer for. How much of what I've read about you connecting to the idea of Mexican independence as a, with an Irish traveler in your background, how much of that 
or are you really feeling how much of it is promotion? I'm really feeling a lot of it. You know, we've got a lot of Mexicans in our camp. Um, I'm representing and supporting the Mexican people on this Independence Day weekend. And I want to give them a great uh, night of entertainment um, to see the lineal heavyweight champion walking out in a Mexican mask, dressed in Mexican colours, uh, with the Mexican flag. Does it get any better than that? No, do, do you sit around thinking of this? Because, like, the Apollo Creed thing was a great ring walk. And then even the way you came in the ring, I don't know if it was intentional, like Hulk Hogan playing Thunderlips in Rocky Three over the top rope. The, here you are. That, that's, that's a lot of fun. But then you kind of take it a little deeper with, with the Lucador mask and everything. Like you, yes. You... Yes, you know, it's entertainment. We're in Las Vegas, capital of entertainment in the world with the lineal heavyweight champion of the world, the biggest most charismatic, colorful personality in sports. I think that's true, as a matter of fact. Nevertheless, you got to back it up. So you did it last time with Schwartz. You put on a show. You turned southpaw. You wound up knocking him out in two rounds. But people will be comparing you, of course, to Deontay Wilder, who is also electrifying and knocks people out. What do you have in store for Saturday night? I have a lot of entertainment planned. We have a great, like the Apollo Creed ring walk. We have a great Mexican-themed ring walk. It's going to be sensational. How could you top? Because you're in with an opponent people don't expect to win. Yeah. Yet he has an amateur pedigree. He's a big guy. He didn't look scared during no, the way in. he doesn't look afraid at all. How do you top what you did to Schwartz? Is that your plan? Are you comparing yourself against yourself you know in your last Like doubt? I always say, I'm here to have fun, I'm here to entertain, and I'm here to put on a good fight. So however the fight goes, whether it's a one-round knockout or a 12-round point decision, I'll be happy either way. But the one thing I will guarantee is I am going to have fun because I'm a fun guy, and that's what I do. I always entertain, and I always have fun. You do, but do you use fights like this at all to work on stuff? Like, in the first round against Schwartz, you obviously weren't trying to hurt him. You were measuring him, seeing what you wanted to do. Then you turned southpaw, and it looked like you were Muhammad Ali against Ron Lyle against the ropes, making a miss. Yeah. Were you, are you work, using these what? kind of fights what? to work on stuff for Deontay Wilder? Because some might say it's a mistake to take a guy you know you can do whatever you want with when you have a monster waiting for you on the other side. I'm not so sure he is a monster. I'm not so sure. Is he any more of a monster than uh, Tom Schwartz or this guy Otto Wallin? They're only men with boxing gloves on. They are not monsters. They're human beings with boxing gloves on. You a monster? I'm not a monster. I'm a lovely person. I, I, well, you are a lovely person, but, but you're also six is, yeah. foot nine yeah, and you have upper body movement. You can move around the ring. You can turn southpaw and you can punch. I wouldn't say I'm a monster. I'm some a freak of nature. That's a what freak I am. of nature. A freak of nature. I defy every law of gravity with the God-given talent that I've been given. And I'm here to display it, and that's what I'll do. Before we get out of here, do you feel different this time? Last time was your kind of American debut in Vegas, and it, there were a lot of people there. It wasn't yet a sellout. But my prediction was, based on the show you put on, pre-fight, ring walk, fight itself, post-fight, after post fight, the whole after thing, party. that this would be a bigger event than it was the last time, in spite of your challenger not having a big name in this country. Are you feeling that so far in this promotion? It feels fantastic. You know, Top Rank do an absolutely wonderful job. Um, they cut no corners, they spare no expense to deliver the best shows in sports, in boxing sports. Um, I feel as if we go to another level with it. You know, I, I, I was an entertainer in the UK, but coming to America, being in Las Vegas for the second time in as many fights, it almost gives me the spur and energy to go further and further with the entertainment factor. Now, but of course we're here to win fights as well. Take that into account. We've got to win. We've got to look good doing it. And that's it. We'll have fun and enjoy, enjoy the night. Speaking of looking good, look, you are the kind of character that if you came in as a fat guy and moved around in one, people would say George Foreman did it and he had charisma and people loved that. But you came in eight pounds lighter than you did last time. And it still looks to me like you might be able to get lighter than that. No, and I'm not going to go lighter than that. You know, I was 18 stone 11. I was 263 pounds for me. Last fight with Schwartz. This one, I was 254. And this is your fighting weight, you think? I think this is it. I think this is it. And what was the difference in this camp and previous camps in terms of your weight? I think nothing in terms of weight because we didn't try and lose weight. But I think I had more fun in this camp than I ever did in any other camp. So you're going to see a really fun, happy Tyson Fury on the night. And that's always a dangerous customer. The thing that intrigues me so much, everyone, about what you're going to see on Saturday night. These questions. Oh, the, the recording cut off. Jesus Christ. Thank you. My bad, my DVR didn't record all of it, but wow, man, that was, yeah. So, um, I'm going to be here tomorrow night covering these fights. 
I'm interested to see, you know, what Wale is going to do. By the way, Tom Schwartz is back like sometime next week or something, right? Untelevised. Yeah, he's back on the 28th. In fact, he's been back. <laughs> he's been back. He fought last week, a couple weeks ago. A few weeks ago against a guy that was 6-7, and seven, got a one first-round knockout. Building his resume back up. I'm T-Street Controversy with FightView360.com. Please subscribe.